I'm Maria from Point Design, and today we're going to be making a Stockholm bag. So I thought I'd start by showing you the bag we're going to be making, and it's this. It's one of my first patterns actually, and I just redone it so that it doesn't only just feature the big exterior pocket, but it also has a zipper closure now, so you can zip it up if you choose to, which I think is really convenient. It also has a nice big interior zipper pocket, which I hope you can see, and uh, this nice big open pocket on the other side. It's a generous size bag, and uh, it's perfect for beach days, that's when I most often use it, but also for travel. Uh, it has uh, nice feet in the bottom, and it's just one of my favorites. So I'm really excited to get to do it for you today. So let's begin. I have uh, started by interfacing all my pieces with all the interfacing. I'm working with a vinyl that has this kind of a fluffy backside. Uh, therefore, I know my uh, sturdy interfacing, which is fast to fuse heavy, um, equivalent of Pelham Caltex uh, 72. Uh, it won't stick very well to this kind of fussy vinyl. So I have pressed first the Pelham um, Caltex or <laughs> Fast Diffuse Heavy onto the vinyl. And then on top of that, I have uh, G700 or uh, thin woven fusible interfacing that I fuse on top of my heavy interfacing. And I let it extend all the way out to the single analysis so that when I saw this down, I at the same time saw down the heavy interfacing, making it impossible for it to kind of um, loosen its grip when I turn the knife and cause a bunch of problems because uh, it tends to do that when you're using this kind of vinyl otherwise. So I highly recommend fusing a thin fusible interfacing on top of your heavy interfacing pieces if you have any hesitations about whether or not it's going to stay up. So I'm going to show you a short clip of how I do that and then we're going to continue. So guys, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, since the vinyl I'm using is kind of fluffy, <laughs> uh, it, it has this uh, um, uneven surface that's kind of soft. So for sure when I start to turn this, it will come loose, even though I have fused this pretty well. So it's actually nicely attached now in most places. Uh, it's it risks coming off once I turn the bag since it's going to put quite a lot of pressure on this. Quite a lot of pressure <laughs> and stress on this. So I want to show you what I do to prevent this from being an issue. And that is I fuse this first, I let it cool down completely and then I put a layer of woven interfacing, thin fusible interfacing, pretty much anything you have at home will work. And I will fuse this on top because that will prevent the um, uh, <laughs> the corners and such from coming loose when I turn the bag and during uh, construction as well, of course. So I just try to fuse this so that it's completely attached, giving me this kind of protective layer and cat hair. <laughs> uh, that will, when I stitch this down, it will keep the heavy interfacing from lifting and that makes everything so much less troublesome. It uh, buys me a peace of mind for turning the bag. So um, unless I get a super, super good fuse. Sorry for the noise, by the way. I have uh, baking paper. Uh, for putting in the oven underneath. So uh, if this sticks out, I don't risk fusing it to my pressing board. So that's just for my pressing board's protection. Not that it's very nice, but I don't want to risk getting glue on anything else I'm working on later. So I will do this to all my pieces with heavy interfacing to ensure it will stay in place during construction and that the corners won't be able to lift when I turn 
giving me grief later in construction. So I highly recommend that you look into doing this yourself. It's a little bit more work since you have to cut the extra uh, thin interfacing, but trust me when I say it's worth it in the end. So normally with this bag you start with the handles. I have, however, already made them because I have a video showing exactly how I make these handles. So I'm going to link to that one right here. And um, then if you want to make these handles, you can follow that video instead, because otherwise this video is going to be so long, because uh, there's quite a few tips and tricks in that video, and I don't have to make it twice. So skip to that video if you want to know how I make these lovely rolled handles. Otherwise, stick with me, and we're going to continue making our Stockholm bag. So, like I said, I won't be showing you exactly how I make uh, these uh, types of handles since I have a separate video showing that. But I thought I would mention uh, that working with this vinyl, uh, normally I recommend a top stitch needle for this work. But I don't know if it's because of the fussy backside of the vinyl or whatever it is, but I did get jumped or skipped stitches anyway. So I switched to a jeans needle, a uh, hundred weight. 100 weight, 100 width, uh, jeans needle, and that did the trick, luckily. So after some frustration, I managed to solve why I was getting skipped stitches anyway. So I'm just gonna take a few stitches here to show you. And I do this, like explained in the other videos, super slowly to ensure that I try to stay in the same stitches as the ones I made when I saw this closed. So this was really hard to do with the <laughs> with the phone in the way. Uh, so I'm sorry if you hear me breathing. Let me see if I can show you better. Like that maybe. And like I said in the other video, it's super important that when you have to readjust, don't pull or tug on your fabric. Stop with the needle down, lift your presser foot, and then adjust your fabric. No pulling, because with these layers, you really need to make sure your needle can pass through straight down, as otherwise it will end up in the needle plates and you'll get a bent needle and possibly hurt yourself. So. Please don't do that. Be careful. Stop carefully, readjust, and then continue. I'm gonna <laughs> keep doing this in this very slow fashion because it's actually worth it. And uh, I'm gonna jump to the next step in making the Stockholm bag so you don't have to watch this twice in case you wanna make flat, um, flat handles instead or if you've already watched the video for the handles, you don't have to see it again. So, we are going to start with sewing our front pocket pieces B together with the front pocket lining L. So I'm going <laughs> to see if I can find that in my little pile here. There we go. So this is my contrast fabric. Beautiful uh, from Hoffman Fabrics. I bought it from Walling Sea Centre. And we're going to sew them together, right sides together, along the top curved side. So I'm going to leave my heavy interfacing piece up because then I can see exactly where I'm going to sew right next to my heavy interfacing. So I'm going to clip these together to make sure. <laughs> they don't get away from me. As there's a few curves here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to switch to a. I'm going to turn on my machine. <laughs> and then I'm going to switch to a slim presser foot because I want to be able to saw right next to my interfacing. So I've chosen uh, this kind of zipper foot or piping foot. Uh, if you have uh, a household machine, you can use your zipper foot and just move your needle as far as it goes to the left to kind of allow you to have your presser foot flat on the fabric while you sew to keep the tension, thread tension, good all the way around. So there we go. I'm going to shorten my stitch length a little to like 2.75 or something. 
and we've done that so just along the curve of the side. You know you don't you have too much pressure foot pressure when it doesn't really want to feed and it's just holding on, you know, you don't get the nice go to the fitness. So I'm just letting it kind of roll slowly around the curve here. It's gonna be a bit of a hassle when it comes to the interior curve. So I will kind of have to allow my presser foot to get up on the on the heavy interfacing a little, giving me a loose seam, but it's the best we can do <laughs> with this type of curve. Okay. We have a number of both inner curves that are a little tricky. And it's a little harder to see when you have the velvet interfacing on top of your heavy interfacing. So Take that into account and go slow to save yourself future trouble. <laughs> okay. Oh, and my lining did kind of get away from me anyway. That will happen when you talk and not look at what you do. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, I kind of, I got to rather nice curve at the interior here anyway, it's not perfect, but it works. So we're going to trim down the curve pieces. If you don't have this type of zigzag scissors, you can use your regular scissors and just make little V-shaped snips here in the curves to allow them to lie flat when we turn it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I kind of forget which side of me you're on. There we go. So here in the curves we have the little V shapes to allow us to turn this a little bit flat. That's what we're going to do now. And here, you see, we have to kind of force this around and over. And I kind of massage this a little around as I turn because the stiff interfacing in the seam allowance is kind of heavy, so you kind of need to work with it a little. I massage it a little and I pull down the lining a bit further than the exterior fabric because I don't want to see the lining fabric from the front. You can choose to leave it up and leave it as a little nice contrast, which can be super cool, but I choose not to do that for this one because they're quite similar and it will just look a bit off to me. However, that's entirely your preference if you prefer to do that. So here I just kind of lift that through, move my finger in on the back and roll it over and massage it to kind of get a nice, even, whips around the curve here. Go okay, and again, pull down the lining a little extra so it's not visible on the front. Oh, and there we lose the sunshine. I should probably <laughs> turn on the light. I'm just going to do this while I still have my foot on it. And then I'll turn on the light so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, because it got really dark when the sun went away, didn't it? So here I continue with this kind of a massage. Uh, it will look a little wobbly on the back, but that will sort itself out once we have top stitch this. And let's be honest, you're not going to look at the the lining of this pocket a lot anyway. There we go. Something like that. So I'm just gonna go and <laughs> turn on the lights so you can see what I'm doing even if we'll use the sun. There we have some better light, I hope. Uh, now we're going to toss this, this, and for that I need a Teflon foot. You can use a walking foot if you prefer, but I'm going to be using one on my uh, uh, <laughs> compensator feet, which will allow me to saw 
right next to the edge where the lens support, so I can kind of just flow it around my face. Let's put that on. We're going to lengthen up this length. I'm going to go to four. And uh, go ahead and start top stitching. How big you want your seam allowance here is really up to preference. So um, I'm using one eighth of an inch, which is about three millimeters. So just because I think it looks nice. If you prefer a bigger one, don't hesitate, throw up one. Massage that a bit. A little edgy. Here we have the same kind of issue with the curves though that we had when we did the design them together. So I'm taking it really slow here, especially around the inner curve. Kind of try and look where I want my seam to go instead of just letting the guides guide me because uh, it won't line like this to my fabric as I'm working the curves. So this is a little go by feel kind of situation. And now we have another inner curve. Oh, that was not nice. I kind of got away from me, didn't it? Hmm. Uh, we'll see if I'm going to redo that or not. <laughs> but it's really hard to see with this kind of patterned vinyl <laughs> where I'm going. It's not flat, so it's a little difficult to kind of get a sense for where you're going and how you're going. Oh, that was really annoying. Like, <laughs> that curve is not nice at all, but I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna try to live with it because it's not very visible with this one, thankfully. But if I wasn't filming, I would just nail pick it and <laughs> do it over. Anyway, I'm gonna give this a bit of a press on the back before I continue. So, now we are going to attach our handles to the back of the bag. So, I'm gonna see if you can see what I'm doing here. I really hope so. You want to make sure that this is in the right direction. So you want the 14 inch uh, piece to be the bottom and top and the 13 inch side to be the sides. So I'm going to choose which handle I like the least. And that's going to be on the back because you won't see that as much. So I'm going to see if I've made this is my nice handle, <laughs> that's going to be my front handle, and this will be my back handle. And I'm going to actually keep the side with the double stitch on top because I think it looks nicer, but you can of course um, kind of twist and turn it and see which way you prefer. Uh, so uh, we're going to measure out where we're going to put it first, and that is 8 inches from the bottom and 4.5 inch from the side, sorry, 2.5 inch from the side. And then, oh, this is a, oh, this is a bad, bad one. And then we do this, so two and a half inch, and eight inches. I hope you can see that. Yeah. I'm going to do a little mark where I'm going to place the bottom corner of So two and a half inch and eight inches, and then I do another little mark on this side where I want the bottom corner of my handle. Two and a half, I said, not two. Sorry. 
It's really hard. Do this on a flat surface and you save yourself a lot of hassle. Uh, I just wanted to be convenient and not change the position of the camera, which gave me a lot of extra trouble instead. So, uh, there we go. Okay, so I've had my little marks and I have my handles. And they are going to be placed like that. Uh, for this, to ensure that they get straight, I'm going to be using a ruler. I'm going to remove this so I can work here. Hopefully, there we go. And we need a bit of tape. Actually, should I should probably do it because this is a really slippery mine, also. This is never going to stay. I don't have any of my good tape left. So I put a number of strips of tape, I stay out of the stitch lines because then I don't have to saw through this super sticky tape. And I'm going to make a lot of, of these tape, um, <laughs> tape sticks because I really don't want this to kind of turn around on me as I'm sewing. Uh, normally I would probably use a glue and leave it to dry properly before I try to sew it down. But now I'm trying to bend myself some time, so let's hope I don't get too regret that. One always does, doesn't one? There we go, and then remove the tape. Um, probably want to make sure we have the right part up. I'm going to start with this side. I need my ruler so that it's two and a half inch in and I leave it all the way up so that I can use that as a support so I know that I stick this down straight because it's no fun having an uneven handle. There we go. So, oh, let's see if I have it. Normally, I would put a strip of uh, of uh, painters tape here while I work, so I know that it stays in place. But as I don't seem to have any such, close for me. No, that's too short. Darn it. Okay, let's just hope it stays down. If I had been cleaner, I would have prepared this side <laughs> also with the tape. So I'm just I'm doing the same thing. I'm just taping a bunch of tape strips right next to each other. If you have a wider tape that's really strong, use that and save yourself some trouble. But my good wider tape is all out, so I have to order more. Stay in place. And off with the tape. Oh, I'm probably out of camera now. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. Let's. It's really hard to do this with your nails, your gel nails. I'm trying to learn how to do them myself, which is why they probably look a little funky, but I'm having a lot of fun with it, so <laughs> that's the main thing, right? There we go. So, tape off. I use my ruler as support, two and a half inch in from the side. I have my little mark that I made previously, and I place this down at the mark, and I use the ruler as a guide right next to here to leave it straight. There we go. And we have. Kind of. <laughs> uh, finished backside. So I'm gonna do a bit of, give myself a little bit of a guide here. Uh, let's see what I say we can touch on here. It's one and a half inch. So let's mark that out. One and a half inch and I do a little line there. So I now I sew them down exactly on the same on both sides. 
we go, and um, all around. Otherwise, I'm going to be following the previous digit types. Sorry. For that, I will be using a Teflon foot with a big opening, so I can see uh, where I'm going. Since I want to be going in the previous digit lines, so uh, therefore. Um, I use one with has a wide opening here, and it doesn't really matter what it looks like otherwise. I'm gonna finish up my bottom thread since I'm gonna be tying off my thread on the back instead of backstitching to avoid bulk. So let's do this. This one looks really thick, even for my machine. So this is gonna be a bit of a wrestling match. <laughs> Oh, please, you have to be able to fit in there. There we go. And I use the same stitch length I have used for uh, for the handles as well, so this should be fine. Of course, I've got a little bit of. Stop with your needle down. Okay. And carefully and guide your oh too short. And I shorten my stitch like do like one and a half maybe, maybe, and just give you a little step there before I continue so I can so I don't have to pull on my fabric a lot since this is very thick. And I always bend in my needle if I do. There we go. And over here, I'm kind of holding this little bubble that's made here down as I'm going. Okay. And I'll take one back stitch. And I'm going to go back over the top here because that's the one that's going to have the most strain. And do a double stitch line here. And I'm going to go back again to ensure that this will really stay in place. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this up. Whoops, that was more difficult than I thought it would be. off. And before I tie this down, I'm going to sew the other side so I don't accidentally pull this out of place. And you'll see that I haven't accidentally pushed this off center. And I think I haven't, so I'm going to just really quickly do the same thing on this other um, handle. A self tidying one, if you have. I have to use my little helper because my <laughs> skin is currently softer than veal. Uh, I haven't done anything for so long. So. Um, and then I take threads that are on the front and I pull them through in one of the uh, stitches. This is going to be really hard to so oh, push that through. Then to the back, pull them through, and tie them off. And this is to avoid that kind of back stitching bolt that might not be very pretty. So I just tie them, trim them, whoops. And 
birds. So this is uh, polyester thread. I just bend them like that to ensure they won't unravel. You may or may not want to do <laughs> yeah. If you feel unsure, just tie them off and they will for sure stay anyway. We have handles on the back, now we just need handles on the front. But first, let me see, I'm just going to make sure I do this in the right... Yeah. Order. Take, save the needle. I really like this, by the way. It's the only way I can keep track of my hands to needles, otherwise I lose them in the middle, as you noticed. Uh, I remove the lining by pulling that out of the way and I measure the same measurements as I did for the back. Uh, 8 inches from the bottom and 2.5 inches in from the side. I need to find a handle which, which I apparently have completely lost. Where did I put it? I'll be back in a second. I found my handle and I have prepped it with tape on both sides. Um, I have pulled my lining out of the way from the front pocket and now we're going to put all our handles. So we're going to measure it again from the bottom. Eight inches and two and a half inches. Then we're going to make a little mark for the bottom corner. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Eight and two and a half. And a little work. There we go. And we're going to pop these in place. Make sure we got the right side up, which in my case is the side with the double stitch line. Be smart <laughs> to take this off before I started filming, but that just wouldn't have been me, would it? <laughs> let's remove those, and actually, let's remove those. We can put those down in place too at the same time, almost at the same time. And like I said, if you don't have a strong uh, tape, you can always use a sturdy glue. Instead, and just wait a little before you sew them down and let it dry properly. So there we go, right side up. Ruler in place to give us that little guidance so we know that our handle is on straight. Um, oops. I, I also said this is much easier on a flat surface, so I'll do it on a flat surface. Camera. There we go. I'll pop that there and we'll do the same thing for this side. Two and a half inches in on the side and handle. And there we go. Now we're going to stitch this down in the same way as we did for the back. So we pull out the thread so we have to tie off. Oh, I'm going to measure out first one and a half inch and draw a little guideline. So stitch lines in the same place on both sides. Does that look a little wonky here? Eight. And that's eight, yeah, should be good. And we sew. <laughs> and we wiggle. Because this is, oh, okay, that's why I can't get that. 
kind of move my solution just a little for this. So I can lift this up high. Now, there we're talking. That's right. So troublesome to get in the room there. It was lifting so low. Let it go. Hold on to your seat. Uh, your head. And start. Carefully make sure you stay in the same stitches if it's possible. Stop with your needle down. Turn. Okay. Turn. Make sure you're going this other way. one step so I don't accidentally unravel this when I turn around and, and so and we'll try to stay again in the same stitches and I did this I got over it three times so I'm not for sure that it will stay in place. And here I did exactly what I was talking about before. Oh, that's good. Then we have an example. Good. Well, anyway, I can show you. Uh, I accidentally didn't let my uh, sewing machine uh, get all the way down and catch the bottom thread. So I got a skip stitch there. So I'll show you how I deal with that in a second. I'm going to sew this one down first so I don't accidentally uh, lose the grip of the tape here and get it all wonky. You can see better what I'm doing. Okay, so here you can see the skip stitches. I finished up the other handle since you don't need to see this twice. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by uh, attaching or sewing down the long threads and then we're going to deal with the skip stitches. So here I take my, my threads on the front and I Whoops. This was difficult with the <laughs> with the phone in the way. There we go. Uh, and I pulled them back to the to the other side. There. And tie them off. Like that. There we go. Trim and burn. There we go. Now we're going to deal with this because that will not be looking pretty from the front. But we're going to start by giving ourselves a bit of thread to work with. So that's what I'm doing off camera and um, I'm going to be working with the thread double because I need that bit of extra strength because I will be pulling on it quite a bit. So what I do is I find the hole for where the sewing machine's needle have gone through, put it there. Then, whoops, <laughs> sorry guys. Oh, that is so close. You can't see what I'm doing anyway. And then I, oops, I lost it. 
try to, sorry, push it up through the existing hole. Well, this is not a good angle, is it? There, let's try that. And I pull off about, oops, that was really tough. about half of it and the rest I leave on the back and here I put this in under the thread so that I get a loop around the thread and I push oops push this into the same hole so as you can see uh, I'm kind of mending that ugly lost stitch and I pull it out on the back and I loop it pull at it I loop it around this lost stitch here this is so much easier when you're not doing it with the phone in the way um, There we go, and then I'll be tying this off to sort of catch the missed stitch on both sides, and I do a fairly hard knot, and I'm going to look at the front to make sure I haven't, no, I haven't pulled too loosely so the stitch looks nice from the front. And now we're just going to tie it off on the back. And this is why I'm using the double thread because I'm actually pulling it pretty hard to make sure the stitch stays neatly in place. There we go. Now that's there. Uh, we're going to do the skip stitch on the other side. There we are. All skip stitches fish. <laughs> And uh, now we're going to be adding uh, any decoration that you want to the front. So I'm going to put on one of my, or not mine, my Emmeline bags, handmade towels. I really like the look of those. See, See? so pretty. And I'm straightening the legs and removing the washer. And I'm going to use the washer as a guide for where I want to put my tag. So I think I'm going to clean it there. And I want it centered. Yeah, let's say three quarters of an inch on the long edge. And we center it as good as we can. I'm going to do little marks where I want the legs to go. There we go. And then I grab my seam ripper. I remove the lining and I cut through the, <laughs> the vinyl and the heavy interfacing, but not my lining. So I cut there. Rather make the cut too small, so you have to extend it and make it too big and end up with a wobbly tag. See if that's big enough. I think it's too on the source is always good but not too much. I think that's a wrinkly looking thing. Wow that was not centered at all. Let's do that. Gonna extend this hole a little downwards so that I can push it down a bit more. As when I pressed it, I accidentally pressed it upwards. Sorry, it got wonky. <laughs> it's only my right hand that's strong enough to do this, so I need to switch this around a little as I can. Let's see if we can. There we go, that's a lot better. Great for the And 
does it have? No, <laughs> I cannot stand on that. Let's bring this hole a little further down. Just a little, just like a millimetre, one sixteenth of an inch. Flips it down. Do a bit go now, straighter. And we'll turn it upside down. Put the washer on. And then we'll fold it down. Let's see that I get it as straight as I can. Oh, sorry. Before I fold the washer down. There we go. Oh, this is tough for me. <laughs> Over that so that it doesn't ruin my um, my lining over time. It's shading. If I can find my duct tape for this, I thought I prepped everything for this, but I have not. Hang on, I'm going to get duct tape. Found it. <laughs> it. It actually wasn't me who lost it for once. It was Eric who used it. Sorry, for once. <laughs> to live with that too. It's not I'm living with it with this bag, but anyway. Um, here we go. Lining protected. We have a nice handmade tag. And now we're gonna go to our bag feet. So you take your bottom and find your bag feet. I'm gonna use five. Measuring from the heavy interfacing says that is where my seam might go. And half inch in again on the short side. And I kind of want to put one in the middle, so um, 47 inches. You might want to wait with adding them just to make the holes now and prepare for them but wait with adding them till you've actually sewn the exterior of your bag because it might get a little tight sewing these seams otherwise uh, when we're constructing the bag but since these are kind of small i'm not really concerned so i'm going to make my holes and add my bag kit now so i do it the same way as with the <laughs> with the, the prongs for the 
it's fine. I make a slit, I make it slightly smaller, and uh, hold for the foot, or even the actual foot. from the right side. This it. And then this it. And maybe not, maybe too small. Maybe too small. But rather too small than too big. That's the rule. And tight. No, that's a little stingy. It's not. There we are. Let's try to put this in. You know? No? It's going now? I'm actually just doing them like that uh, since I don't want to use the uh, the wire separated holes for this, so I just kind of put them on in the middle and separate the legs. All of these feet come with washers. That's usually fine too. As long as you pop them and secure the legs, it should be fine. I usually do a little bit of glue if I don't have washers. Um, since I have the washers here, I think I'm just going to put some tape on top and leave it to the back. Tape protects both the Lining on the back from the uh, washers, and it also protects the washers from coming undone. So, if this had been, I would have added a little drop of all purpose glue there if I hadn't had the washer. allow me to saw right next to it, I think. Like before, if you have a domestic machine, use your super foot and move your needle as far as you can to the left to allow you to do this. No! Oh, we've actually skipped a step. And we back up. <laughs> we need the, this piece first. So, I forgot step 15. Let's return to step 15. Decide which part of this you want up. So you take your front pocket back piece, piece H, which is in your contrast fabric. You place the pocket on the front. You line them up and you put them together. Because we only want the one. Oh, I should be taking them together like 
this way. Of course, we will be sorting this from the other side. down the front pocket. And since I've already switched my presser foot, I'm going to do this from the back. Wait a one quarter of an inch. See my arm approximately? Or we're just going to face this in place so it doesn't have to be pretty or exact. We don't have to do it ugly either. <laughs> right side up, the bottom, right side down, and I'm going to clip these two together. Okay. We're going to join them, and I'm going to shorten my stitch length to 275, maybe. And I'm going to saw from the corner of this, so half an inch in, I'm not going to start all the way out here, but I'm actually going to start here. Let's do this. So half an inch in, I'm going to start my seam, and I'm going to stop my seam half an inch in as well. This is to make it easier to do the corners. So, let's do this. Now we might have to increase our precipice pressure a bit, as we have quite a bit of bulk here. Back stitch properly, but not further than your line. And this is where, if you have a very big uh, back foot, it can get bulky. So then wait and attach them after you make this part. I'm going to sew another line of stitches just outside this one to strengthen this seam and reduce some of the pressure of the first two. Just to scan one even an inch outside the first seam. Not on the first seam, so we don't want to weaken the first seam and weaken the vinyl. We really don't want to do that. So there we go, it doesn't have to be pretty. And but it's going to be so pretty. <laughs> okay, uh, then we want the back of the back. We're going to unfold this and we're going to put too much stuff on my table. Hang on a second before this falls down. I'm going to put it down. Okay, like that. Then we take the back of the back, place it right sides together with the bottom. Line them up, clip them together. God, this is going to be such a pretty bag. Already in love with it. 
I've been saving this vinyl since a trip to the US for five years ago, six years ago. <laughs> so this has been a long time coming. Again, start and stop your seam half an inch in. So you start at the heavy interfacing. So we can add our side seams later. some of the pressure of the seam and also to reinforce. Okay. Seriously? How pretty is this gonna be? It's gonna be so fancy. <laughs> okay, so at the 19. Uh, we're going to do acid cis in the pattern, but then I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing it. Come on, so we start at the front. The reason I saw the front first is because, I mean, that's what you see most of, so you want that to be as perfect as possible. This is really big. <laughs> I'm just going to check if you can actually see what I'm doing or not. You can kind of see what I'm doing. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. As good as it gets, anyway. So here, since this is a trapezoid, trapezoid, no idea how you pronounce that in English, I'm just going to trim this off. Since it's not straight, <laughs> we are going to angle it a bit. So we're going to line it up here, so that um, the two sections, let's see if you can see that. Because we're going to saw all the way down to this bottom seam here, but not over it. Down to, but not over it. So that we want to, we want this part to line up there. Place it in place. And then this part here will only match, you can see that or not. And my computer in the way, this is so big. <laughs> Try this. Uh, this will only line up here, exactly where the seam is going to go. So this will be at an angle. It doesn't match here. It doesn't match down here. But it will match where our seam will be. So that's all that matters. So let's put this together and to get ready to stitch. Sorry. Uh, here at the top. Whoa, this is so big. At the top, we're going to start all the way up, since this is the top of our bag, we're not going to put any bottom there. So there, our seam is going to start all the way at the top. And just follow the edge of our interfacing all the way down. And here, we're going to stop exactly here, where before this seam here, so exactly where the, oops, <laughs> this is even more difficult when you try to get it to show on the camera. Uh, so we are going to stop just before that seam, so I can feel it there, and stop there. Back stitch. I moved this a little uh, as I was sewing, so I stopped a little earlier. No, I can go all the way down. Okay, great. Uh, but I don't want to sew any more here because then I'm going to weaken this vinyl, so I'm just going to do my second line of stitching and leave that to go all the way down. since you have a bulky vinyl, it's, or even if you have a cotton fabric, it's, um, it's not the end of the world since the 
corner will be tied to memory. So in the pattern, I now suggest that you saw this part here, but some people, I, I hope you can see what I'm doing, uh, this part here, but some people find it easier to saw the bottom last, so I'm going to show you how to do that here, since the other way is described in the pattern. Sorry. Now, instead of lining up the bottom, we line up the long sides first. And again, I hope you see what I'm doing. Sorry. At the top, it's going to be leaning a little again, and it's going to match up just there, where our seam is going to go. Oops. And we press this in here. It's going to take a bit of a wrestling match to get this as we want it. Hopefully not too bad. And I'm going to place a few extra clips on this since it's going to require a bit of wrestling to get this as we want it. So here I'm going <laughs> here it's better to squish it and get the seams nice and straight and then kind of work on eventual wrinkles of the pants. So again we saw all the way down to this bottom seam here, uh, I hope you can see, to the bottom seam here <laughs> and uh, stop and secure our thread there. So all the way down to but not over. Like that, and then I saw my second seam just outside this one, exactly like with all of the others. Take some of the stress off. I'm gonna place my my uh, camera on the other side for the final side, so I'm gonna move my camera so we can see better what I'm doing and how I'm resting. Hang on, okay, let's hope this angle works. So we're gonna sew the bottom. And I'm gonna just pull these two together so they are not, and I'm gonna try to find my clips <laughs> somewhere. Um, <laughs> there. And then we're gonna be squishing. And we do it like this. Uh, can you see that? I hope you can see that. Uh, we squish it down. And we're going to be sewing the bottom seam. Here. Oops. There. This is a little tricky. And it does require a bit of wrestling, so don't be afraid. Use your muscles. Force that thing to behave. And follow your orders. <laughs> there we go, and again we stop before the corner and that stitch. There we go. And oops, that was a little wonky at the top there, but that should hopefully not be visible once we're done. And we do the second thing just like we've done with the other things. There we go, let's see. Ta da! And let's take a look at the inside. I hope you can see that. Oops, there. Aha! Uh -huh. Gonna be gorgeous! <laughs> and we do the same thing on the other side of the bar. So we take our side. And I kind of knocked you over there, didn't I? There. And we line them up again at an angle. Uh, 
and all the way down here. And this is where we're going to stop the seam, just before this seam here. So we're going to stop all the way down here, but not further. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm all sweaty and my muscles are kind of telling me to give it a rest. So I might just do that soon. I kind of want to finish the exterior with you guys today before it gets too dark. And again, right next to the interface. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Let's move you a little there. I'm using super stiff interfacing and super stiff vinyl, so this is more of a hassle than it probably will be for you if you're using a slightly less stiff vinyl. There we go, a few more steps. There we go, back up. And there we go. And we do our second seam again. Oh, this is a workout. the sides first and then the bottom last. This is entirely your preference, which way you prefer. And then we're gonna ooh, match up those two. Oh god, sorry, you can see that. Uh, there we are. And here I got the cotton fabric behind the vinyl, so I'm gonna have to wiggle and work those two a little extra so I don't get bumps here. Let me see if I manage that. Sorry. <laughs> there, that should be good. And now I'm all out of clips. Oops. I'm gonna clip this a bit more than I did the other one since it's a little um, more pressure on the bag now since I have the other side already sewn. If you want, you can kind of give this a going over with a stapler and kind of staple this in place. Um, I broke my stapler <laughs> just uh, recently, so uh, I'm not going to show you that. Uh, not with this anyway. And now I'm going to pull you in. And with a little bit of violence, I'm going to force this to comply and stitch. And here I'm pulling a little this to the left so that I don't um, get a bit of a bubble thing here. Since I've basted the pocket in place. This looks and feels rather wonky. <laughs> um, so bear with me. out. Mm, yeah, that's good. 
And now we just have the bottom left. Ooh. Then I'm <laughs> then I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> Possibly a nap. So let's see here. Here we go. Here's the bottom. No, I only saw the one stitch line. Sorry, we're gonna sew the the extra line of stitches first before we do anything else. Our support stitches. You should be looking at what you're doing, even though you're almost done. Might be the wonkiest line of stitches I've ever sewn, but you know it. Ah, it's not, it's just an extra precaution, it's not actually a nail. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm kind of wrestling this so that I can force it like this. So it will be easy to sew the bottom, or at least easier. Join them together with the clips. There we go. And there we go. And then we can force this in here, <laughs> underneath here, as well as we possibly can. Here we go. Come on. That's ridiculous. Here we go. Again, stop and start at the heavy interfacing. Make sure everything is out of the way for your seam line. There you can see my pretty stitches. Not so pretty stitches. Uh, uh, there we go. On bulk. And uh, let's take a look inside. Oh, how pretty is that going to be? It's going to be gorgeous. Well, now I'm going to take a break and breathe. And I'll continue tomorrow when we have some more sunlight. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, new day, new energy and time for the lining. But first, we need to trim the corners of our back and I hope you will be able to see this. So I'm gonna do one and then I'll take a look and see if you can see. So what we do is we trim all the fabric here, which will allow us to turn out the corners in a nice and neat way. Don't trim too much. You want a bit of bulk actually for uh, extra stability, but you do want uh, a snugger turn, so to speak. Let me see if you can see this, what I'm doing. Yeah, it looks like you can actually. Yeah, let me just, yeah, you can see that. Let's, uh, let's do this then. We <laughs> uh, just trim a suitable amount on all corners. This doesn't have to be exact or anything. Just leave, make sure you leave a little seam allowance too much. Okay. okay, so I'm going to turn this now uh, before I do anything else because I'm going to show you how to do the Stockholm bag with the drop-in lining. So it's the other way is described in the pattern anyway. I thought it was shown an alternative. Um, it's mainly because this vinyl is super thick. I mean, these handles are pretty much at the top of what my machine can handle. Um, and uh, it's going to be super stiff to turn and try to turn it with the lining and everything in through uh, the bottom. It's going to be a tough job. My hands can't take it. So I'm going to go get a um, hair, brown hair dryer and I'm going to heat the vinyl and I'm going to show you how I turn this. So I've got my hair dryer and I'm going to on heat. Uh, heat the vinyl enough so that it's easy to turn. Since I have uh, this extra layer of interfacing on top of my heavy interfacing, 
doesn't really matter if I hit it so much that the interfacing can go let's go a little, since it's going to be held in place anyway thanks to the thin interfacing. and my vinyl is feeling a little softer. I'm going to try to turn this. I hope I'm strong enough. I might not be. I'm going to need rest after this. But thankfully, since the vinyl is warm, it's a lot easier than it would have been with cold vinyl. I've had it so a lot of layers. So if you like me are weak, I really recommend the dropping lining. Ah. Oh goodness gracious, come on. I can do this. <laughs> okay, I can't. It's both my hand. There we go. And here we go. Let's poke out the corners as well as we can. So that the wrinkles don't have time to set. Uh, if you have a cotton bag or like uh, something else that you can press from the front, you can of course give it a going over to ensure the wrinkles don't set. Uh, if you have any deep wrinkles on say the back of your bag, one here for example, you can iron this from the inside to kind of help it heat up and reset the glue. Um, like I show in my uh, how to iron your bag kind of tutorial, which is also available on YouTube. I'll try to link it here. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm not going to show you this because <laughs> it's a big bag, it's going to take a while. But basically what I do is just iron it from the interior. And here I will iron it carefully from the front with a small iron to kind of allow these wrinkles to be worked out. I'll be back shortly. Okay guys, let's start with the lining. So first we take our top pieces of the exterior fabric, uh, which in my case is the vinyl, and then I'm going to need the, whoops, I don't want to lose my zipper pull on my zipper, so I'm going to stuff them here for now, uh, and we need the lining side pieces M, which should be these, right? Yeah, and the short ones. So we're gonna match. If you have fabric with direction, uh, these pieces should be at the top. And since I don't, I'm just gonna put them <laughs> in the short end if you like. No, actually, first I'm gonna draw the seam allowance on these since I don't have a good precision for half an inch, and I wanna make sure I get this measurement correctly. So I just draw the seam allowance half an inch. That's what I did anyway. Oh, that pencil's not good. Let's try another. Pink, pink is always better. Half an inch seam allowance on all your uh, top panel lining pieces. If your markings on your uh, 
plate is reliable, which mine are not. You can, of course, use those instead. What else is my orange? I don't want to risk it. And I nearly ran out of the vinyl, so that's what I'm using all the way up to the, to the edges here. Super warm today too, so if you can hear me, I really apologize, but I literally will melt if I don't have it on. It's not too bothersome for you guys. Your top panel lining side pieces F, right, right sides together. <laughs> that could have been fun. Uh, right sides together with your lining side pieces. I'm going to do a little shorter thing when I was here, so 275 maybe. Not someone else. See, is it shame? God, I'm not. I pulled out my <laughs> sewing machine. Ah, oh, goodness. So much easier with electricity. Let's try that again. Third time is the charm, right? And we have too high specific pressure. Okay, that's better. And we do the same thing with the next one. So at the top, it's too much to join if you have that with the direction. Since this fabric is a lot thicker, it would be very uh, counterintuitive to force this up. So I'm just going to leave it down and then I'm going to uh, stitch this in place with a top stitch. And I'm using my, um, <laughs> my, I'm so tired, I'm so sorry guys. My compensator foot with one and a half, 1.8 seam allowance. I won't move the camera to show you because it's very easy. Uh, so just cut off the sides with the template with the seam allowance still there. Yes. Um, let's try this again. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to do this video for a week now, but my body doesn't want to allow me. So let's hope today's today. Uh, I have cut down the sides to shape using the template. So they are now the correct size and shape. And we can put them aside. For that. Next, we're going to start with our zipper closure, actually. And uh, uh, we start this by separating the zipper. If you don't, uh, if you're unsure, like, what size up or down, you can always make a little mark. So I'll make a little mark here in the seam allowance. Uh, and I'll call that B, or back end. <laughs> and if I do that on the right side, so I know sides up. It's not always as clear as it is in the zipper. So I have two little bees there and now I know which side is right side up and which side is the bottom end. 
Uh, if you don't, don't want zip closure for your bag, by the way, just keep this part. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Continue uh, in the next step. So we separate the zipper and we want to fold it so we get a nice top end. So we take the one without the mark and we're going to kind of sort of fold it at a 90 degree angle. Something, I want you to see this, something like that. And then I'll take, you can, if you have a softer zipper, the zipper is rather uh, um, firm, I guess firm is the word. Uh, it doesn't really want to bend easily, uh, so I'm not going to use a bit of tape like I usually do or glue. I'm actually going to saw this fold down so I now it'll stay in place during construction. Uh, I'll just see if there's some in it. Um, so just doing a couple of stitches, oops, around the teeth, so I know this fold stays in place. Okay. Something like that. There we go. So we have the sort of 90 degree fold here on the front and on the back it looks something like that. Trim the end off, make it even, but I'll leave it like that for now. And then we're going to do the other side because these two will be mirrored. So we're going to fold that one too. I think you can see we're going to do this. It's, it's described very in depth in the pattern, so if you can't see what I'm doing here, which I guess you won't, if my fingers are kind of in the way, uh, <laughs> uh, you can always just look in the pattern and see how this is to be done. Make a knot. This should be doable anyway. Just kind of base this in place. Make sure it's base. You really want it. Nice and neat. There we go. Something like that. And we have our two zippers finished. Next, we will be doing the zipper facing, I'll put this aside for now. Uh, we have them here, 25 inches long. Oh, I wonder how we've managed to separate them properly. <laughs> Time to switch my furniture cabinet blade, clearly. So we we'll put the wrong side up. And we measure one inch in from the bottom. And on the other side, so one in and one inch in. And we take a bit of tape and put it at the end here. Fold it up to the mark we just made uh, so we get half an inch folded in there. We did the same thing here. Fold it up so we get half an inch folded in and we do the same thing on the other side. Are prepped. They're 24 inches now, since we folded up half an inch in each end. And I'm going to make sure. Since so I cut this from one piece, so they will match uh, nicely, I'm going to lay them the way they will be when we finish. Uh, and then we're going to measure from one side 11 inches and 3. No, five eighths of an inch. And we're going to make a little mark on 
foil. This is not halfway, by the way. Don't fold it in half and make the mark. Do the 11 inches and pilate with your ruler. Yeah. And we're going to add a bit of tape to these. So we can get that zipper on. Sorry, I'm having so shaky, guys. It's my medication. It makes me all unstable. Therefore, all these things take a bit longer than they normally would, but you know. At least I'm here, I'm sorry, right? So, uh, here we go. We have our two zipper facings. One. Then we take our zipper with the 90 degree angle end and we put it right side down. And the, um, the folded end should be exactly at the mark we made. So, line that up. Oops. Just sort of take this edge to edge, taking care to get this as straight as you possibly can. Don't stretch the zipper tape, but straighten it carefully before you kind of put it down on your tape. Because the straighter you tape this down, the straighter your zipper will be when you sew it later. So it's worth taking a few extra seconds here, making sure they're nice and neat. You can do the other one. And that one should also be right side down. And the top edge with the folded teeth should be at the mark we just made. And straighten, but don't stretch the zipper tape. And try to get this as straight as you can. Oops. <laughs> it's so hard trying to get this to show on the camera. I hope you can see what I'm doing with the white and white, but anyway. So these are now mirrored. Uh, I'm leaving them like this when I do this, so I don't accidentally mess up because my head is really not screwed on right lately. So everything <laughs> takes a little more time and a little more thinking than it normally would. Then we place a piece of tape on top so we can hold this down. On both of them. And then we're actually going to fold this in half. So now we fold it in half and line up the short ends like this. You want this to be as even as it humanely can. And then we match up, oh, sorry, my head is in the way, isn't it? Then we match up the long sides all the way down. And as you can see here, the fold. It's not exactly where the teeth come out, you have a little extra here, and that will make it so much easier when we saw this later. So we do the same thing on the other side, but actually I'm going to stop a couple of clips here just to be sure. It stays in place. And we do the same thing on the other side. We fold it in half, line up the short sides first. And long side and then we fold it in half here. So let's put a couple of clips here too. Now we'll save the sorry bit. <coughs> oh now I'm losing my voice. That's not good. So now we're gonna sew this down with about three eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you have a, a number three zipper, a quarter of an inch seam allowance should be better. This. Actually, we can trim this off so it doesn't get in the way for the press it foot. And you can use a magnetic seam guide if you want to make sure you get the right seam allowance all the way through. And I shortened my stitch length a bit from the top stitching, so it's about 275. And I'm using my zipper foot. 
And here I help it a bit since we have the bump on the zippers. I push slightly, slightly, so we get over the zipper bump. And here we make sure these line up. If for some reason, like if this one has been pushed forward, you can always lift this. And we fold it so they are edge to edge here, because that's where we really want it to line up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we are. And we do the other half. Also with the apron and seam allowance. I love my magnificent knife. It gives me so much peace of mind when I'm doing these things, especially now when my hands are shaky and <laughs> I have a bit of trouble focusing my eyes. So there's such a relief. I know I'll get a straight to nice line. So I really recommend getting one if you don't have one. Turn this nice and neatly. So don't need to trim the zipper, just uh, fold like that. So that you may get a nice corner. And then we turn this. If your vinyl is like mine, you should probably heat it a little with your hair blower. Because this is really I have my head lower in my bathroom, like you know, normal people right here. So <laughs> it's not here, so I'm going to try to do this anyway. Without it. But normally I would just run to the bathroom and heat this slightly before I turn it to save myself the hassle. Um, I recommend you tip that. Not that, so I think that looks better. And then we're going to sort of work this so that it folds nicely. So, and one more seam, which also is easier if you heated up your line up. You know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and then we line up them, the corners and the long sides with clips. Make sure you massage that a little so it stays nice and flat. Let's go. Finger pressing is really key here. I think I'm trying to poke that out a little more with some of the meat chop. So that is not where I need to listen. So sharp, <laughs> go through my vinyl, that would kind of suck. Not perfect, but it's nicer. And here we have a zipper panel. And we do the same thing on the other side. Turn this with a bit of force. Corner as nicely as we can. And can we double massage our senior place. Whoops. Seriously, guys, my hands are just not cooperating with me. <laughs> Stuff is flying left and right. Follow this last bit here. Alright, lining up. And with 
thing nicely neatly. This corner here is going to be quite bulky, so I'm actually going to go over it with a hammer, so I'm going to go get that and show you how I do that to kind of flatten it to make sure it's easy to sew. <laughs> so guys, new day, new energy, and let's continue where we left off. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, kind of force this, uh, this uh, here to compress a bit with the help of a hammer. Uh, if you have flat tongs, you can try that. But I find that the hammer is best for me since I'm rather weak now. So I'm sorry for the noise. Uh, the reason I use a, a scrap piece here is because I don't want to risk denting or making marks in my vinyl. And don't hesitate to be quite forceful. Uh, the violence we want here. <laughs> That's better and flatter. Let me do the same thing on this one. Give it a going over. There we go. I'm going to reposition my. So now we're going to top stitch around these. Uh, and I'm going to use a Teflon fat since this one was really sticky <laughs> and it would never work with a metal foot. Uh, if you don't have a Teflon foot, you can always try a walking foot. Uh, but if you're going to be working with vinyl, uh, I recommend that you look into getting a Teflon foot for your machine, as it will save you a bit of trouble. Some machines really like the walking foot though, so yeah, I mean, if you're happy with the walking foot, <laughs> never mind what I'm saying now. Sorry. Here we go, so we're going to do a top stitch length of stitches. And we turn on the machine. <laughs> Thank you for your patience with me, guys. My head is not screwed on right at all. Now, thanks to the forceful banging, uh, it shouldn't be very difficult to kind of get up on the, the bump here since we flattened it. Uh, you might want to do that on the floor though. I had to give mine a few extra punches when I repositioned the camera as it hasn't been forceful enough on the table. So uh, make sure you really, really <laughs> give it a Use it as an opportunity to get rid of some uh, aggressions, maybe, if you have. And now I'm um, kind of gently uh, forcing the zipper and the vinyl apart here with my fingers. So I'm kind of finger pressing this as I go. Mm -hmm. Since you're getting skip stitches, Increase your pressure foot pressure because the likeliness is that your needle can't penetrate and catch the bottom thread. So you need a bit more pressure since this is quite thick, especially if you're using a thick vinyl like I am. So uh, just up your pressure foot pressure or maybe even change your needle if you are using a thin one. should have used a bit of a hump jumper because this was a bigger <laughs> step than I thought. So I'm going to put this scrap in here so that it levels out uh, with the teeth of the zipper so I can get uh, nice stitches and avoid those skip stitches that I would get otherwise if my pressure foot is up in the air.
Ta da! And we have our sticker panels. And they're so pretty. So I saw I have a bit of thread sticking out. So since I'm using polyester thread and I have little threads like that, I just take a lighter and just burn them off. Um, <laughs> if that makes you unsure, don't do it. But I've been doing it for quite some time, so I'm quite comfortable with this. So I just kind of fold that up and bend. Uh, so there we go. Uh, now we need to attach these, right? Uh, let me just take a check in the patterns so I don't do this the wrong way. There we go. It is time for our linings. So, lining pieces L, um, decide which direction you want them. No, this will do. And then you place uh, one of your uh, panels right side up, that's the thing. Uh, this might feel weird, but it will make sense later. So, uh, along the long side, the 14 inch side, we place this centered. And centered should be an inch from the side, right? Because this one is 12 and this is 14. So, yeah. So, an inch in from each side. It's a little tricky doing this up here because it never lays exactly flat and I really want this centered so I'm not going to be too hasty here because uncentered zip panels do it very nice. There we go uh, and we do the same thing on the other one. This will be on each side of the bag, so when it's put together, these will come up and join nicely. And now we just base this down for now, just so we know that it stays in place, centered. And I keep my Teflon foot on since this is a really sticky vinyl, so I don't want it to stick on my pressure foot. Basting now, so this doesn't have to be pretty or neat or even or even anything. <laughs> it's just holding it in place until we get the top panel on. I just gently press out this um, vinyl so I don't get any bubbles. So that's why I'm holding and applying a little bit of pressure on it the entire time. Side down, and here we've already uh, drawn out our seam allowance, so that's already done. Not simple yet, like that. We go, and the other one as well. Right side down on top. Since I don't want the, the compensator edge messing up my pressure for pressure. 
which I really need to have my foot for this, but it was on the top of the pile, so therefore I'm going with it. I have completely managed to get my off center, it doesn't really matter since it's got a sturdy seam allowance, but it just fell on and then I just cut it. There we go. And we sew this down with half an inch of seam allowance. same way as we did with the um, side pieces so we're gonna uh, fold this since it's super thick and heavy it kind of only want to lie this direction and that's the direction it's gonna be lying in so we switch again to a compensator foot and we lengthen our stitches to our stitching rate We do our uh, top stitching line here to uh, hold the seam allowance in place and also to keep this one pointing upwards since that will make it easier to handle it. So I'm just gently separating this as I go along so I don't have to get up and press all the time. towards the fabric. Finger press this a little and we are God, I love these colours, they make me so happy. Pink turquoise oops. <laughs> I accidentally ran into my zipper panel. This colour makes me so happy and my I really need some black bags, you know, brown bags, you know, adult bags <laughs> that you can wear with everything. But every time I go and try to choose black fabric or vinyl, something stops me and I end up with a pink or purple or, <laughs> you know, neon green. <laughs> so I guess I just have to settle for that for now. But hopefully sometime shortly I will be making an adult black bag or brown maybe. Now, uh, if you didn't sew the zipper, you will be joining us here. Because now we are going to be making the zipper pocket. So we are um, taking the zipper pocket lining piece. Oh, let me just quickly double check which size that's supposed to be. 11 times 15. So 
that should be this one, right? Yeah, that's a little. Those were the open pockets. Then we need our uh, number three zipper, or whichever size you've chosen. I like the small, uh, small uh, zipper. Small zippers for these kind of pockets. I have a video showing how I get uh, zipper pulls back on. So if you're uncertain, I will try to link to that one. And I won't go into depth about how to do it here because if you're uncomfortable, I'm assuming you have a zipper with zip pull on already for this, maybe. Just because I'm doing this on video, <laughs> doesn't want to cooperate with me. Anyway, uh, I've left this a little longer than my uh, zipper pocket and then the pattern states because uh, then I can just sort these first steps with the zipper pull out of the way so I don't have to worry about it or bother with it really. So that's the way I prefer to do it. And I'm gonna um, go okay. with a regular zipper regular press foot for this and I've just placed uh, oh if you have um, um, if you feel uncomfortable with this you can of course put this in place uh, so you leave the, the section with the zipper off uh, and in this step you want the zipper to be opening and closing in the direction it will be opening and closing in your finished bag so since I like to open from the left um, my zipper is on my right hand side, so it pulls close in that direction. Uh, if you have a fabric with direction, it should be upside down at this point, so you will be folding this over. And uh, you want the up of the fabric to be pointing in that direction, so the opposite side from the zipper. And then we just stitch this down with a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance. There we go, so that's sewn on. Zipper is right side up, I forgot to mention. Then we fold this over like that and we line up the zipper from the fabric, the lining fabric, like so. I will stitch it down the same way with the second quarter of an inch seam allowance. in my bag, closing in that direction. So I, I'm going to leave this laying down like this. So it's longer on one side. And then I'm actually going to cut this open. The reason I do it this way is because I find it so annoying to have to work with two pieces for the lining. So I just find this easier, but it's of course personal preference. So here we got our zip pocket. And we're going to put that aside for now. And I'm going to go have a little water and I will be back shortly with how we install the panel. So, now we are going to add our uh, super facing. Uh, I've already cut it out, so I'm going to add some tape so we easily can stick it down. Um, and I do that, I place the tape centred 
so I don't have to sew through the tape. And I'm sewing down this uh, this facing, so I just center it as good as I can and avoid the outer edges if that's where I will be stitching. Depending on what tape you're using, this will be more or less important since some tapes are perfectly fine to be sewn through. But since I know some people have had a huge hassle with this, I generally try to make advice for avoiding having to do that. So, now we're going to see which, uh, which side you want your zipper on. So, I, I want my zipper on the back of my bag, so, uh, and I want to be closing my bag in the same direction as my zipper. So, I says this is my zipper pocket and it closes in this direction. Uh, the same way it will be true for this zipper, since it closes up here. So, therefore, I'm going to push it on this pocket on my lining. And we don't need a ruler. So, we put this in place. Oh, actually, I used um, measured from the bottom for this. Sorry, guys. We are. We need a bigger ruler. <laughs> we put it eight inches from the bottom, and then we just place my ruler like that. This is much easier if you do it on a flat table instead of on your machine's bed. So I recommend that you do as I say, not as I do. And then we remove our tape. And we're going to use the um, ruler as kind of a guide. So we're going to be placing this along the ruler. and a half inch on each side. Press this down. And then press it in place. I have my, my head is not in the way there. And then we gently press this in place too. And try to keep it as evenly spaced as possible so that this opening isn't kind of wonky. There we go. Press in place and it should stay just outside of your seam allowance there. Uh, but if it feels bulky or if you place it a little up, just trim down your zima lines on the back to keep it out of the way when you're showing this. I hope that makes sense. If this is bulky, just cut it down. There we are. Sorry. Now we're going to stitch this down. So we're going to start by sewing around the outer edge only. And I'm going to switch to a teflon foot again. And I'm looking for my smallest compensator for there we go. So I'll be sewing around the corners. I'm going to be using a slightly shorter stitch length than I have for the other top stitching, so maybe just 3.2 or something. I'm going to pull up the bottom thread. Um, so that I can leave the ends on my thread long and tie them off on the back so I don't have to backstitch to secure this. Uh, if you have a machine with a nice neat uh, um, uh, backstitching feature or <laughs> attachment feature, you can of course do that. Uh, but if you're like me, you have a more manual machine, I recommend that you leave the threads long. So we're going to be sewing all around this, slow and steady wins the race, and I don't fix it. Be careful so you don't accidentally dislodge your tape when you do this, so I'm holding the vinyl in place kind of as I go along. Um, I really need to lower my... Since I've been sewing thick layers, I've had pretty high uh, top 
for attention, but since this is very few layers, I now lowered the tension so I don't have to see the bottom thread on the top of my stitches. I should have checked that after just a few stitches. For some reason I did it. And now I get to refresh that. <laughs> If you're uncertain about your uh, thread tension, uh, you can always check it on a scrap of similar uh, thickness. Before you actually sew your piece. Since this is on the inside of the bag and you won't exactly get that much <laughs> uh, display time, I'm not too bothered with this actually. I'm trying to become more casual in my outlook <laughs> on these things and not be such a perfectionist. But it's really difficult. And I should have actually um, removed my. That's not going to work. I'm going to have to trim down my, my seam allowance here because I'm working with a compensated foot. If I hadn't worked with a compensated foot, it wouldn't have gotten in the way, but now it kind of does, and it's making my stitches. Make sure you don't cut your, <laughs> your lining. Keep that well out of the way. There we go. This is a thick bulk, uh, kind of stopped my machine from feeding uh, nice and properly. So I'm leaving my thread things long again and I'm going to continue stitching exactly where I stopped. And then I will be tying this down at the end. I'm going to start in the same hole as I stopped. There we go. I know you can see my machine is feeding nicely again since I cut away the seam allowance here, which was causing an uneven bottom for me to work on. You always want to avoid that. You always want your presser foot to be laying flat because otherwise you will be getting skip stitches and weight tension issues and yeah, just unhappy sewing. So nice and flat is how we want our presser foot. Do not cut your threads, leave them long. And here we have it. Ta da! It's going to be so cute. Uh, now we're going to uh, bury our threads. So I'm using a self turning needle for this. I got those with the open top. Saves me having to try to um, <laughs> thread the eye. I just kind of pop it in. These are super convenient, also if you're quilting and, and just securing threads, so I would highly recommend putting a pack of those on your shopping list if you haven't got them already. So I'm just pulling all the threads since I stopped in another extra place now, I have a few extra threads to secure. I'm starting by just pulling all of the threads from the front to the back so that I can tie them off invisibly. Normally, we just have to do this in one place, but like I said, sometimes when you're not thinking properly, you'll have to pay for it with work. Let me just tie this off. And if I just knock them a little, so I don't have to 
the bathroom later, coming undone, so as they melt together the polyester threads. So, but you can of course just trim them off and leave them like that. opening for the zipper. So I am just uh, just gonna fold this a bit so I get a place where I can put my scissors. Cut an opening. I'm gonna cut along from the front. Like that, taking care not to cut the vinyl. That would undo all our hard work. Turn it over and then cut from the back. And I leave my scissors lying flat like this. I hope you can see that well. So I don't risk cutting the vinyl. I leave about a quarter of an inch. Um, like that. You can do more, you can do less. However, just leave a little seam allowance. And then this also comes for well, why it's easier when you have the tape placed in the middle. Because if you'd had tape uh, all the way up to the edge here, this would be much more troublesome and you would get tape on your scissors if we don't want that. And this doesn't have to be pretty, no one will ever see this. <laughs> so it's a good chance to just be quick and sloppy. So here we got we got a nice opening here. And uh, then we want our Super pocket, and uh, you have one longer side, which is the back. You unfold these two, and you place some tape here. Uh, if you want, you can give this a press so you make sure it lays nice and flat as you work. And then I place tape. I leave a little at the end without tape. Why I will show you as we saw this closed and then I just tape along the stitch line here by the edge of the zipper on both sides Oops. got the tip for this tape by the way from my, my Facebook so many talented guys there. I'm so happy to have you all there. And you give me so much inspiration. I love my group. So uh, make sure you uh, pull in your zipper ball. Since now we're going to be placing it in the opening and we don't want to be <laughs> without the zipper ball. You can trim off the extra zipper. And uh, then we are going to be placing this like that. But what you want to make sure is you keep this open. Um, or unfold it. Oh, this has come loose. I'll give it a press shortly. We remove the tape. And we place our oops <laughs> zipper tape carefully centered in the opening. And let this take time, guys. Uh, the meter this is, the meter the whole zipper will look. Because you want this to be nice and straight in the opening. And we want this zipper to look even. And you want to make sure you have your zipper pull in the opening here. And we've got a wig on here then. And this part where the simple is is the trickiest to get nice. So I pull it up if it comes uneven and do it again. There. It will be worth it in the end. There we go. Something like that should hopefully be nice. Yeah, that should do it. 
And then we're gonna uh, pop this over. Uh, we're gonna pin this out of the way so we know we don't accidentally saw our zipper pocket close as we saw this. So actually, I'm just I'm not gonna pin this since I have the vinyl. I'm just gonna put a couple of clips here so I hold it safely out of the way like that. So now it's out of the way. We turn it over again, and we're gonna stitch this back on. I do everything in the order of the pattern here. Yep. Okay, so we do the same thing. We leave long thread tails. So we don't have to, to secure our thread, as that can be unsightly bulk. And then we're going to oops, <laughs> stitch this down. And then I think this best if it should work. Let's see. Shortly. Nice and flat. Yeah, should hopefully. And we stitch all the way on that. Super. We stitch it in place. So here I just kind of gently guide this along. With my fingers, and I'm using the uh, edge of the compensator foot as support. Sure, it's all perfectly straight. Of uh, bobbin thread. Oh, of course, I am. You should check this before you do top stitching to make sure you have enough bobbin thread. So, today the bobbin won. Sometimes it does not. I'm gonna go have a cup of coffee before I continue, but I'll be back soon because today we're finishing this bag. Okay. Uh, so here's what I've done. Uh, I am left a few stitches where uh, I lost my uh, my bottom thread and I pulled them back, I tied them off on the back so that I can start sewing in the same place again. <laughs> Since I didn't check that I had enough bottom thread. So, with long thread tails we will continue stitching where we left off. And I try to start in the same hole. Like that. Slow and steady wins the race, right? And when I get to the second ball, I'll stop with my needle down. And I'll pull it out of the way to the section that's already been sewn. And uh, continue with the last, with the last part of the zipper. And uh, that way we don't have to worry about getting a bubble around the zipper hole, which we might have had otherwise if we tried to sew around it. Yeah. 
right where we started. We can press red tails along. And ta -da! We get a pretty nice and even zipper. Hopefully. <laughs> At least that's what we're going for. We're going to have to move that needle and the clips. Then I'm going to pull back the thread tails to the back. And if you check and make sure you have a bobbin thread, you only have to do this once. But since I started and stopped in two places, I'm going to have to do this in two places. Thank you, too. And we tie it off. I promise I'll <laughs> have shorter, <coughs> shorter nails in the next video, I hope, because I'm really not used to handling this long pause. <laughs> and that probably shows. But it's been so much fun to have long and pretty nails. So it's worth the little extra hassle, I think. There we go. Then we pull back the top, pull down the top, and we line up our sides. Again, this doesn't have to be even or pretty. Since no one will ever see this anyway. And then we so close the sides with about a quarter of the seam allowance. And I usually do this from the front actually, and I just kind of fold this out of the way like that. And then I saw there. Too lazy to switch my present foot, shorten the stitch lane. And this is why we tied uh, tape all the way out of the zipper, since then we might have a problem folding this back when we saw. Each other a couple of times just to make sure it's safe and warm and open. We do the same thing on the other side. Fold this back. This vinyl's really thick. That's really pretty side. <laughs> and here I um I haven't really centered my pocket properly, so I've got slightly less than a quarter of an inch in my hands here, so I'll just nozzle up right next to you. This part here, that bit, and then I'll slowly increase my seam allowance at 500 pillows. Here we go. And there we go, we have the pocket open in the bottom. Important since we will be sewing closed um, the bottom of the bag through that opening later. Super pocket! Yay! <laughs> I'm going to give this a bit of a press since now it's a little bubbly. Uh, but in the meantime, we can do our open pocket. And then we want a 14 inch part. We fold it over so this, the 14 inch side. To the 14 inch side. Give it a little clip. And then we just sew this closed with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch properly because we're we'll returning this little uh, pipe.
turn it right side out. And now you're gonna press this since it's for the linky right now. And then I usually press it like this so that I get the, the seam a little way up on the back. That way um, I don't have to sew down the bottom exactly on the seam, making it bulky. Uh, also, if you have like a pretty uh, the, uh, print that you want on a special part of this pocket, uh, you can just adjust roll this around a little so you get the right part of the print. But now I'm just gonna go press this in place here and then we continue. Side, I've given this a press so I have the seam there. Then we top stitch along the top with the um, <laughs> without the seam. Uh, this is just top stitching length. I use my compensator foot. You can of course use whichever foot you like, but if you have a domestic machine, you can use your stitch in the ditch foot and just move your needle to the left of this. Uh, now I'm going to place this on the remaining lining along without the zipper pocket. And then I place that right here, let's see, two and a half inches from the bottom. So just with the help of um, ruler to make sure it's perfectly straight. And then put this in place. And then I start by sewing down the bottom so that the zipper is in place. Zipper, not zipper, the pocket is in place. decide on how many and what kind of pockets we want. Uh, since I'm going to separate this into a couple of smaller pockets. Uh, I usually want one pocket for my phone so I can leave it standing up, just pop it in. And uh, just gonna draw some so I've just got a mark approximately what kind of pockets I want. So then I have a phone pocket in the middle and I have two larger pockets on the sides for, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, and here you really want to make sure you back this properly since this is going to be a lot of wear and tear when you put out, put in stuff and take out stuff of the pocket. So. Always back it extra well when making this kind of open pocket. We might want to just put the line here so we don't accidentally get 
get bubbly pockets. Face, sides, eyes, support restriction. And we have our pockets. You can, of course, choose to put a nice uh, line of um, vinyl at the top there, or whatever kind of decorations you want to make it clearer, <laughs> more visible where the pockets are. Uh, okay, I think we are about ready to construct our um, lighting. Yes. Uh, if you have a magnetic snap instead, you would install this now. You wouldn't have this. Okay, so we're going to construct our lining, and we have um, one lining piece. I'm starting with the one with my pocket on. Then we take the bottom and we place it along the wall, <laughs> logically high. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm going to draw out my seam allowance on the bottom, which is a slightly generous half inch. So it's, say almost one eighth of an inch extra, but not really. Um, then we're going to start and stop our seam, also a slightly generous half inch from the end, so something like that, to there, like we did with the exterior, since, but then we just followed the, um, the heavy interfacing, but here you kind of want to make sure you draw this out so you don't accidentally saw all the way. And for this, I'm just going to use a regular pressure foot or a super thin one, that works too. Um, Shorter my stick length, bitch length to. Oh, what is happening here? Why am I having on that old? Hmm. Okay. Uh, Shorten my sixth length to about two and a half. I'm gonna start and stop at the mark we made there, about half an inch from the end. Of, of course, you, you, you do want to clip this in place because you don't want this to <coughs> be uneven. So I <coughs> back stitch properly here and then just follow the line through. Rather so too short than too long here. There we go. And uh, ta <laughs> We add the next lining piece right side down on top of the bottom. Let's clip it together properly. And then we draw our seam allowance again. And again, a slightly generous half inch. Oops. And we make the mark where we want to stop our seam. Also, a slightly generous half inch from the end. However, uh, now. Um, I, I wouldn't have had to draw all the way here because we're just going to saw. No, actually we're not. We are going to saw all the way here. Okay. Uh, because we are going to do a drop-in lining. So we actually don't need to leave openings anywhere uh, other than for in the, in the zipper pocket for our bottom inserts. So we are actually going to saw this close since we're not going to be turning the bag. Uh, so I was actually right. <laughs> You start at the mark, that stage, and then we saw the hopping part. Oops, did I get caught on you? There we go. And then we're going to do the sides. 
uh, but to make sure I don't accidentally <laughs> saw down my uh, zipper, I'm just going to clip those out of the way. Like that. This way, sorry. And then we're going to be placing one of our side pieces here. And what I want to do here is that I want to line up this line here so it matches perfectly since that's the place it's going to show if it's not perfectly lined up so I'm going to start by looking here uh, I hope you can see this uh, so that they line up neatly here and then I'm going to place a couple of clips there so I know that they stay in place uh, place a couple of clips here so I know that these two match up perfectly and then I'll put the rest of the piece. Since this has a trapezoid, trapezoid, I think you pronounce it that way, shape, we're gonna slightly lean it to make it lie correctly. Um, actually, if I had been clever, I would have drawn out my seam allowance first before I placed the clips. So I'm gonna do that quickly. And again, we're working with a slightly generous half inch sigma allowance. Sure, our um, sensitive area is still lining up nicely as it should. Okay. And we go all the way down to the bottom, um, and now we're going to make this. This one, sigma down should be folded down, and this will match up on top. And you will stop sewing right before the bottom here. So it just if you're unsure, just make a mark where you feel the bottom starting, and stop sewing there. Since we're using a generous half inch seam allowance, it's not going to be. Um, perfectly half an inch from the bottom. It's going to be slightly, uh, <laughs> slightly further up. Here we start at the top and backstitch. And now, since I'm using my slim uh, zipper foot, I can actually leave the clips in place, making sure this part here can't move. Of course, it has moved just because I think that. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Oh, I made it worse. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> it's just because I'm filming. Uh, and we just came to force that to line up. Yeah, and I'm just gonna hold that in place as I go. And pray that that turned out nicely. But anyway, I can leave my clips in which was kind of the whole idea here. Uh, did perfectly match up. Uh, but that way you know your fabric doesn't move, so that's quite convenient. Uh, so just kind of move them over there. And then I feel where to stop. And that will be more than half an inch from the bottom now since we are increasing our seam analysis a little. There we go. Oh, like I said, that didn't really match up. Such a shame. But anyway. <laughs> so this is really embarrassing. My alarm went off and I thought it was recording, but it wasn't recording after I had turned it off. So I lost the entire part where I saw the lining, which is really frustrating. But, you know, I just followed the pattern. It's, it's actually really easy. You saw it like you saw the exterior pretty much. 
Um, just, just follow along in the pattern and we'll try to make do without that particular part. So, so if I'm gonna uh, wait and saw another Stockholm bag before I release this video, we will be well into next year probably before I can release it. So let's try to make do. Thank you for your patience. Let me test this. This. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, kind of. Match this up the, the seams. And, um, I know we're going to fold these later. I just want to see uh, if if they kind of work together. Or if I have to adjust something. four seams. Something like that and then we place a couple of more clips along the way. Just so we can see if these two will go together or not. I think they will. Uh -huh, and try to kind of push down the bottom like that and see that it actually fits quite nicely. Um, it's not super big, it's not super small. It's actually quite quite okay. I can work with that. So um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove it again. And then we, unlike the pattern, are doing a drop-in lining, which is why I already have turned so we got the outside out. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to fold this down like that all the way around uh, with a bit of tape, and we're going to do the same thing to the lining. Uh, I'm going to trim this a little. No, not with that. I'm going to trim this so we don't have that much bulk. At the top, where we're going to fold this. So, and then I'm going to place um, actually my thick tape. Along the top here, all the way around. This is similar to what we do on the Rimini. We have sewn that one before. It's kind of the same principle. And then the tape all the way around. Stop, stop, stop. All along the top step. And then, since this is really, really thick right now, I think I'm going to have to clip this as well. So I need to go into both tape and clip this to be sure it stays in place. If I can <laughs> get this to lift from the glue. I am. So I remove the tape and then we just fold this down. 
So I'm gonna say guys, and I'm gonna be holding it in place with clips because my tape is not super strong, but my vinyl is. So, <laughs> so uh, that will help us kind of force it to stay down. That will work. give these corners a going over with the hammer like we did with the zipper. So we kind of smash them down and into submission. Um, but I'll do that in a while. First we're going to do the lining. I'm going to do the same thing here, so trimming off the seam allowances so they're not so bulky. And then we're going to be folding down half an inch on this one as well. Uh, so what you can do actually, which is the easiest, is actually to draw out what we're gonna, where we're gonna be folding and how much we're gonna be folding. So. Just make a mark on it from, um, from the bottom. I do that all the way around actually and save myself some insecurities <laughs> about distances. So I'm just making a mark one inch in from the edge of the vinyl. All the way around. Like that. And then we grab our tape. And we're going to be taping this down. and the color has really merged. I think it's because of the heat actually, because the glow is really weird as well. There we go. So we fold this down. Again, with our trusty clips. Half an inch, so we need to put one inch line there. Like that. All the way around the side. Place a couple, a couple, a couple of clips. A couple of bits here Guys, okay. so on the bottom, on the on the bottom, uh, on the floor now, I'm going to be hammering out 
these corners, like I showed you with the zipper. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera uh, because the noise is really bad. I'm going to do the same thing with these um, corners here. Uh, hammer that as much as I can so I flatten them before we continue. So I handed down the seam analysis to flatten them as much as possible. And now I'm gonna add some more tape. What a surprise, huh? <laughs> uh, my, and I kind of put that down a bit so I don't have to saw through a third layer of tape. And I see if I can see it's a bit sticky. So I'm kind of gluing down what I held with the clips before. And now I'm just kind of putting that in place with the tape here. I hope that makes sense and I hope you can see what I'm doing. So just kind of taping down the fold all the way around. And the reason for all this tape is just because we want this to be as neat as possible and even as possible. So you can, of course, just wing it if you prefer. Usually when I wing it, I end up regretting it. <laughs> so I like a mix of sometimes incredibly carefully nailing the pin and holding everything in place, and then sometimes just going for it. So now we're going to put our whips lining in and make sure you get uh, the part you want to the back of the bag in the back of the bag. So since I want the zipper pocket there, what you can see here is uh, the uh, open pockets toward the front of the bag. And then we're going to start joining the two. How exciting! You can almost see how pretty this back will be when it's done. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so I can start. I'm actually going to start at the back here since no, that's the front. I'm going to start at the back <laughs> because that's kind of along with the front the first thing you'll see. So um, that will be the most visible. So let's start here. Remove some of the tape. To hold on to. I'm giving myself a bit there and I'm going to start lining up these two uh, seams so they match and then we clip that in place because I can't have too many clips and continue and make sure this is edge to edge because otherwise it won't be pretty. Pull a bit of tape, match it up, squish it together, clip in place, like that. Remove a bit of more tape. Move them together, make sure it's even. And continue this way all the way down. Here. Ta -ta. 
looks really good, if I may say so myself. We've got, we've got something looking like a bag, don't we? Ta-da! Okay, so we're going to top stitch this now. And so, uh, I have pulled out my, um, my sewing machine over the edge to make it uh, a free yarn ish <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping you'll be able to see what I do here and me able to see what I'm doing as well because you know both is good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread this on I've got my compensator foot on I've tested my settings I've got a brand new needle and oh so first we're gonna pull out thread so we have so we can tie it off instead of having to back stitch so we leave our thread tails long we whoops scooch in our um bag let me just there we go um so here what well, i'm that was not a good angle, was it? There, maybe. Better. Or worse. Or. That was really difficult. Let's try. That's it. as good as it gets. Okay. So, what I've done is I've upped my presser foot pressure since it's quite a few layers, this. I've got a Teflon foot since uh, this is vinyl, so it's going to stick to itself and everything else. If I don't, I've lengthened my stitch length to uh, almost four and I've got the right thread in both top and bottom. And then we're gonna start sewing and keep our fingers crossed that this will be pretty. And I'm gonna stop and take a look at our stitches, which look fine so far, so good. And I'm gonna I'm making sure this stays even here so I don't lose um, lose the grip or anything. And then we'll take a look again at the stitches. And we've got one skipped stitch, otherwise fine. So I'm increasing my pressure foot pressure a little bit more and we continue. Because I want my presser foot to really condense these layers as much as possible for an as tight seam as possible. There we go. Now I'm going to take a look at the interior to see that the stitches look nice there too. And thankfully they do. <laughs> so we can continue. And here we're coming in to the first seam allowance and that is also our first danger zone. <laughs> so let's try to get this done with nice and neatly. Make sure you don't push or pull on the fabric and here I'm going to put in a bit of a hump jumper underneath here so I don't get skipped stitches because I'm coming off the seam allowance. There we go. And let's continue.
please hands hold on and we're all the way around let's take a look at this okay let's take a look well that's nice well, it doesn't look bad at all actually that looks really nice almost even at the top well close enough anyway uh, considering how heavy <laughs> this vinyl is yeah and here are the skip stitches so I'm going to be fiddling with those trying to fix those but now I'm gonna rest <laughs> because this has been quite the workout but I want you to take it be able to see it a bit better first let's do that and here we go <sighs> Oh my god, it's gorgeous. You're allowed to say that even though you made it yourself, right? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna rest now. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna um, add the zipper. I'm gonna tie this off and I'm gonna insert the bottom inserts as well. And then we're finished. So thank you. Let's continue tomorrow. Okay guys, we have a very pretty bag almost finished, so today we're going to do the finishing touches and uh, kind of wrap it up. So, I hope that's a good angle, yeah. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start by tying off our threads uh, from the top stitching. And I do that with my self-threading needle again. Oh, is the handle in the way? Yeah, that's really in the way. Sorry about that. And I thread it up. And into the in between here. <laughs> that made sense in my head. Like that. And we do the same thing with the interior thread. Okay. And just move this around so that I can see what I'm doing. Next to the exterior thread in the little opening in between the two fabrics here. And then you're gonna tie it off. So that it won't be visible in the end. Or at least that's the plan anyway. There we go. However, since we have vinyl here, I don't know, maybe I have a longer needle somewhere. Yeah, that one could work. And we're going to do thread that into there if it wants to. Since I don't want to make a hole in the, in the vinyl to kind of pull out these threads. There we go. So this is the sturdier a needle almost like um what are they called uh well for sewing furniture anyway so i'm going to use this one and i'm going to pull it down between the layers of vinyl and i'm going to let it come up through the cotton here or at least that's the plan <laughs> there we go i hope you can see uh, let me see if you can see the needle comes out here and between there and then we just gently pull it out or forcefully whichever <laughs> works best and then we have kind of buried our threads between these layers of fabric so then we just cut it off with a little tension so that it will hide in the lining or in between the lining and the exterior. And ta-ta, there it's gone. Next, we're gonna put in our bottoms. So I have uh, two uh, pieces of heavy interfacing here that are going to go into the bag through the opening in the zipper pocket. 
at least that's the plan. <laughs> I hope you can see what I'm doing here. This is more of a by touch than by volition work anyway. So can you work the bottom in place and make sure it's nice and neat. Oh, so uh, and that's so we know is this is a big bag it's going to carry heavy loads we need that extra stability in the bottom so those three layers will give us that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the or actually I maybe not even have to go over I can just pull it over here and I'm gonna fuse that I hope you can see what I'm doing let's do this there uh, fuse the bottom to these new layers of interfacing and fuse the interfacing together as well in the same go. I'm using my small travel iron from Prim that I just love <laughs> for this kind of work. Oh, have I managed? No, that's good. And you kind of just, oh, it's because of that. Uh, I'm holding a hand underneath now because the little uh, bag feet will otherwise make this look uneven. Fusing that together. Um, I'm going to do this proper like at my pressing station later. I just want to show you the general idea basically. So, this is what I've done I've fused the bottom to the bottom interfacing. Now, we're going to so close the zipper pocket. And then I just do like this. Just take it like that and fold down a quarter of an inch to your three eighths of an inch or whatever you're comfortable with really. And we'll clip it together. Can you see what I'm doing? No, not very well. It's falling down. Ah, there we go. Something like that and wind them up all the way to the end this is much easier if you're standing in front of the bag and not at the side i'm trying to keep my arms out of the video but i'm clearly not doing a great job since i can see my hands and pretty much nothing else but i hope you get the gist it's not an important step no one will Pretty much never look into your zipper pocket bottom, so this is not exactly important that it's perfect. It just has to hold your stuff secure. So here I'm just going to sew a line of stitches to close up this. And, well, I might as well do that right away. Hang on, I'll reposition. Well, I've got my... Uh, uh, one eighth of an inch compensator foot, or maybe one sixteenth of an inch. Uh, I'm gonna just sew this close with a thread that matches the lining fabric with a two and a half inch stitch length, probably. gonna move the camera again which is easier said than done apparently there we go, there we go. 
Uh, we're just going to put this down and into the lining. There we are. We zip that closed. I'm going to give this all the lining a good pressing so that it really fits perfectly in here. But I have a separate video on that, so I'm not going to show you that because it takes a long time for me to do. So now we're just going to put on our zipper pull and close this beauty up, basically. So uh, let's do this so you can see it. Let me just... I just trim one side off. So... It's a little uneven because it's usually easier to thread it on then. So I start with the longer side, pull it on. Oh, you can't see that. Start with the longer side, uh, pull it on. And then I just gently guide this part in and pull it up. And let's see if that was even. That was not even at all. <laughs> we need to uh get that one further down wow that's even worse <laughs> okay i'm gonna keep doing this until these two line up uh you don't have to watch that so i'll turn this off and i'll return when i have them evenly spaced <laughs> there we are i've gotten uh, it as evenly as i'm gonna get it and <laughs> we'll have to be happy with that and now i'm gonna add my little tail that I think will be a good length for me. I'm gonna burn the ends so they don't unravel. And then I'm gonna put one of these on. Come on, just the one itsy bitsy little screw. There we go. Let me try this first. Stay there. Fold this in underneath. It'll look something like that. Just gently kind of even it out and prop this on. Okay, <laughs> work that on the end there. there something like that. Yeah. twist and turn this edge a little so that it looks neater. Yeah, that will look good. Uh, I'm gonna add a small drop of glue to the bottom of this. Um, or actually, I don't think I need to. This is so stuck on. I don't wanna keep pulling it and pushing it. Otherwise, you can add a small drop of glue to the bottom to ensure that this will stay on. But this is already so securely there. I'm not worried. It will hold with just the... Um, the tiny screw. Is that the wrong size? Oh my goodness, that is even smaller. Hang on a second, I'm gonna try to find an even itty bitty. <laughs> bit for this one. Okay, this is itty bitty. Where was I? My Phillips head was too big, so I'm using a flathead screwdriver for this. And it's so difficult to see what I'm doing because it's so tiny. There we go. And we carefully screw this all the way down. Hang on. <laughs> I need to see what I'm doing, so I'm just going to turn that away from you for a second. I use a little bit of force. There we go. Nice and neat. We've got our little tail on. We've got our bag pretty much done. Let me, <laughs> let me do this. There we go. Ta-ta! 
we've got a Stockholm bag. I'm going to give it a nice pressy and then I'm going to have a little photo shoot with it so you'll see exactly how beautiful it turned out. Why won't you open like you should? There we go. I'm going to press the interior, make it nice and flat, but for now, I mean, it's already really pretty, <laughs> if I may say so myself. There we go. There we go. We got a nice back. Got little feeties on the bottom. And just a generally very pretty bag, if I may say so myself. I hope you've enjoyed watching this with me. Uh, please laugh with me, not at me. All the times I mess up, my head is not screwed on right lately. So <laughs> this is what we get to work with. I hope you have a good day, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Bye.